Welcome to my new series where I review and correct architectural details from design professionals. Today I'm going to review a wall section for the super contemporary home in the wilderness of a mixed humid climate zone. The structure is framed with a combination of steel, concrete, and wood construction, making for some interesting detailing around these joints and connections. For this specific design, the architect has decided to use the corrugated metal paneling as their weather barrier, sheathing, and cladding, which I don't think is the best idea. If for some reason there is a penetration that started to corrode or leak, there isn't a second line of defense to stop the water. Ideally, this should be sheathed with a weather barrier and an air gap, but let's pretend that we can't do this in this application. So the first thing that I'm going to do is draw out the water control layer. This should be a continuous line, and wherever my pen leaves, I will have identified a discontinuity in the system. So far, everything looks alright in terms of continuous bulk water control at this wall section. Now I'm going to do the same thing for air and vapor control. Now, looking at the callouts, I've noticed they have specified a foil-faced condensation barrier, which I'm assuming they mean a vapor barrier. They're probably thinking this will act as a radiant barrier as well. Um, this isn't exactly the best idea, but we'll continue on. So I've just noticed that they've called out mineral wool insulation, which will absolutely not work for this application. Mineral wool is highly vapor permeable, while the foil-faced vapor barrier is not, and will very likely end up seeing vapor condensing on the backside of the vapor barrier and getting trapped in the wall cavity. During the summertime, this isn't an issue since we get inwards vapor drive from the outside, because vapor moves from the warm side of the wall to the cold side of the wall, um, and it's not really a big deal since they've located the condensing surface on the outside of the assembly. But during the wintertime, since vapor moves from the inside to the outside, having that impermeable layer with a thermally conductive sheathing and cladding system is going to result in condensation on the interior side of the wall. This concrete slab is not a vapor barrier unless it has some sort of impermeable sealant or a vapor barrier underneath. Concrete is actually really porous and can absorb and store a lot of water. On the roof, it looks like they've installed the same foil-faced vapor barrier underneath metal roof panels as an underlayment. So really, this slab is the area where we have some vapor control discontinuities. Now for thermal control, I've noticed they've located part of the steel frame on the outside of the envelope, which is actually really good for minimizing thermal bridging. This channel steel beam up here is a problem. They haven't insulated in between the two flanges, which is a huge thermal bridge, so that cavity will need to be insulated. Down here at the slab edge, we have a massive thermal bridge basically sucking the energy out of the house. The bottom of the slab is insulated by only 3 eighths of an inch of rigid foam, which is like R2 or R3 at best. I don't know why they would choose such little insulation for a suspended concrete slab, but to make things worse, they also have some conductive metal paneling as a soffit underneath, as well as a large steel angle iron at the edge of the slab. Up here at the roof, they've called out timber rafters, creating sort of an air gap between the metal roof and the sheathing, and for the insulation, they've called out more mineral wool, which won't work here either. All that warm, humid air from the interior is going to rise upward through the mineral wall and condense on the backside of the roof finish. Now, unless they plan to have some cross ventilation in this interstitial space, this is going to result in a sweating roof and drip water back down onto the insulation and ceiling plane. So to fix this design, we need to do a few things. 
First thing, we need to replace this mineral wool at the wall with closed cell polyurethane spray foam. It has to be closed cell to prevent pr uh, vapor transmission. Open cell will not work. You could have a combination of a few inches of closed cell and a mineral wool bat if you wanted, but the important thing is that we're moving that condensing surface further inwards. We need to continue this closed cell foam up onto the underside of the roof deck as well to eliminate that condensing surface. You also need to make sure that we insulate this huge thermal bridge at the slab edge. So a good option here would be a nice thick layer of some rigid insulation like EPS or XPS. I would also install some flashing here right above the rigid insulation to kick out any water that might get behind this area, and then close everything off with a back vented soffit. They are also missing a vapor control layer here at the slab, so unless they plan to have some sort of penetrating sealant on the underside, we need to have some sort of vapor barrier that's connected to the spray foam so that we have continuity in the assembly. Now, I just wanted to point out, after a second glance, it looks like they have located their sheathing here. So if that's the case, we need to spray the underside of this surface. And then on top of this decking, we can install a vapor permeable underlayment. That concludes this first design review. Please subscribe if you found this helpful, and I will have more of these types of videos coming out in the near future. Good luck in your projects. Cheers.